our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, uh, how come you never had a nickname? Uh, well, I did, but I didn't like it much. It was asshole, oh. asshole. <laughs> or more specifically, that asshole. <laughs> Not just any asshole, that asshole. So, how you doing? Good, good. I had, uh, I was going through uh, some names uh, I said Alex Bennett would probably be the only person who would know who these people are. Really? Yes. So you're going to give me a let's ask Alex if he knows who this person is. Yes. Okay. Okay. First one uh, Ben Turpin. Ben Turpin was a comedian. He had a funny little mustache. Uh, he was God, a, he right was on. Silent, <laughs> silent comedian. Yeah. And not... Uh, not hugely known, but uh, uh, definitely he had a very funny look. You're right. Yeah, he kind of uh, was he cross-eyed. I can't remember. I think he was cross-eyed. Yeah, yeah, he was cross-eyed and had this little like uh, not a Hitler mustache, but walrus mustache. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. God, I can't believe you knew that. Well, you know, I here's the thing: when I was a kid, I always wanted to know about things that happened before I was born. Now Me I w- too, and I think uh, that's the uh, boy. That is something the current generation were totally different from. Yeah, I mean, I, I soon I'd like to know everything that happened after I died, but unfortunately, I'm never going to know that. <laughs> Do you? Does that ever bother you? By the way, that when you die, it, believe it or not, folks, when you die, you die for longer than you than, than the Earth has been here, right? Mm-hmm. So the Earth is going to keep going on without you, but what it was, what what you're missing, you know, like I, yeah, I, I want to, I want to see us get to Mars, okay, but I'm never going to see it. I would have seen it if those assholes hadn't stopped the space program way back when, and turned it into NASA hauling and shipping, you know, I mean. Um, uh, but I, you know, and and what's going to happen to this country? I, if I came back here a hundred years from now, would it still exist in the, its present state? I doubt it. So even yeah, even fifty years from now, you wonder what it's going to be yeah, like and yeah. how much technology will be in control of our lives. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we don't we don't know. You know, it I, could be a Norwellian nightmare. Could be. Maybe we're. Maybe we won't be missing anything. Well, uh, maybe I won't be missing anything, but I don't know that I won't be missing anything because I won't be missing anything. <laughs> does that make any kind of sense in any it, real it world? It does, but then, but then it also, but it also is, is positive because we won't know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I just you know, I just I, I I wake up every morning and is this the day I'm going to drop dead? Yeah, really, I do that. I think I'm worse than you are when it comes to something like that. Yeah, I used to be really bad about the death. And how, well, how'd you get over it? I think I did, as I got older, just kind of ex- as your body starts to break down, you just realize, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be 95 and uh, in a wheelchair or something. Well, I, you know, I have neuropathy. I have my I have some arthritis in my hand. I did, 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 did. and you go, well, maybe it'd be better off if I did drop dead. You know, who knows? Anyway, uh, let's get back to people I should not know. Okay, another person I didn't know, but uh, Buddy Rogers. Buddy Rogers was uh, married. uh, He actually was the second husband of Mary Pickford. Pickford, right. And uh, he uh, was the star of the first film ever to win an Academy Award for Best Picture called Wings. And he was the star of that. Charles Buddy Rogers. 
to this point. God, you're Mr. Knowledge. So, and I read that the state. I know there there like there are people out there. Unbelievable, a state or something. Yeah, well, no, no. Um, Pickford. She, well, no, but that was Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford. Then they divorced, okay. and so I guess they sold Pickfair. Or maybe she held on to it. I don't know, but they quit calling it Pickfair because it meant Pickford and Fairbanks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, she um, she married Charles Buddy Rogers after she divorced uh, Fairbanks, which was the supposedly that was the marriage of all time. I mean, that was the big Hollywood marriage, and all of a sudden it broke up. It's kind of like Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. So, <laughs> how about that one, huh? I just saw a blurb about that. What, so what, what's the deal with this? They're getting, they're separating. I don't know if they're divorcing, but they're separating. You know, they're going to keep the foundation going, you know. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens. But, uh, the, but anyway, so Buddy Rogers was that. That's who Buddy Rogers was. He, he, was, he was a fairly well-known actor in silent films. When sound came, eh. He was just better known as Mary Pickford's husband. But and then after a while, Oscar. I didn't know that. After a while, they'd say, "You know who Mary Pickford's married to, don't you?" And the person would say, "Who's Mary Pickford?" <laughs> you know. So I mean, you know, these were all silent people. Anyway, go ahead. The silent movies are great. Yeah, go ahead. Harold Lloyd. That's good. Of course, I know Harold Lloyd. Uh, there were, if there were, th uh, four big comedians. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, film comedians. It was Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, uh, Harold Lloyd, and uh, who was the other one? Oh God, my mind's a blank now. He was kind of a uh, he was a, he was another deadpan. Uh, but anyway, those those were the big, three big ones. Uh, and uh, of the three, of course, I I adored Buster Keaton. You know, uh, was Keaton? Uh, you can argue my he might have been the funniest of them. I think he was the best. I think he was the most inventive. I think he was the most courageous. Uh, this is a guy who was willing to die for his comedy. I mean, really he, courageous, because I've seen that that shot where the uh, house he's standing in the doorway, and the whole side of the house falls over. The front front of the house comes down. That's Steamboat Bill Jr. Uh, and uh, that uh, that was, you know, the house was actually on hinges, so it couldn't move when it fell. So it was on a hinge. Uh, but when it fell, he had to be standing in the right spot for the doorway to go over him. And then if you notice when he does that gimmick, and most people know what we're talking about because they always show that scene if they're going to show silent films, um, he doesn't flinch. He, right. he, he just, it happens, boom. <laughs> he doesn't flinch, and then he does what Keaton would always do in situations like that. He kind of looks around like, did something happen? And it, Yeah, it, it's amazing. It was amazing how he could do these things and still keep his cool, you know, so... Um, uh, but that, uh, but uh, Harold Lloyd, on the other hand, Harold Lloyd, in case people don't know who we're talking about, if you ever see a shot of a guy hanging from a clock. That's the only thing I know about him, that yeah. great shot of the clock. Yeah, that's a safety last, is that film. And uh, he was pretty amazing. He was pretty amazing. Uh, he, yeah, I... he would climb up, like, buildings and things like that, although he didn't climb the building, some stunt guy did it. But he would do a lot of these things, and he was missing fingers on one of his hands. He wore a glove on that hand, a flesh-colored glove, so it wouldn't look like he was missing a finger. But, uh, but he, he did a lot of stunts, too, and uh, was, a, was actually a very good, uh, very, very good comic. He was the third of the, of, the, of the bunch. I would say he was third, although Chaplin was my least favorite. But I understand why Chaplin was great, okay? But he was my least favorite, and I, I can't tell you why exactly. So. Uh, well, Chaplin is, uh, I think his silent stuff is great. 
Well, no, his silent stuff is great, and it, and I understand why it's great, and I watch it, and I'm in awe of him, and I go, that's great. Give me Keaton, give me Lloyd. You know, that that's if I'm if if I'm gonna go watch somebody, I'm gonna go watch uh, Keaton above them all. You know, because I just there is one gag that he does that is one of the greatest gags in film. He and his wife have built this house. It's a do-it-yourself house. I think the name of the film is Six Weeks. Supposedly, you're supposed to be able to build this house in six weeks. And they put it together, and now they're trying to move it from one place to another, so they're, they're uh, dragging it with a car, and then it falls <laughs> apart from the car. In other words, the car keeps going, but the back end of the car is still there. So now, all of a sudden, they notice that the, the house is sitting on a railroad track. And off in the distance, you can see this railroad car, <laughs> this railroad train, coming at it. And now the two of them are trying to push it, push it, push it, and the train's coming closer and closer, and they finally jump out of the way, and the train goes on another track and misses the house completely. And they both go, whew, and then a train comes from the other direction and demolishes it. <laughs> That's one of the greatest sight gags I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, just a perfect sight gag. You don't see it coming. Well, you do now because I ruined it for you. But uh, but it would still be funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if any, that, that is really an art to do comedy without speaking. Well... It was called Panama. I mean, you know, I mean, um, uh, I'll tell you, you know, if you ever get to go see a silent film, be sure you see it with an audience um, because you will suddenly realize there are jokes there you never thought were there. Uh, and I went to see Steamboat Bill Jr. Uh, at the uh, Castro Theater uh, with a musical accompaniment during the silent film festival. And we were all sitting there watching Steamboat Bill Jr., a film I've seen maybe 20 times if I've seen it uh, even more than that. And yet, I found gags in it I had never found before because when you're sitting there with an audience, they're starting to laugh at stuff that is funny that you, you just, if you're sitting in, in front of your TV set, you're not gonna laugh at. There's a scene where he's putting on different hats. He's trying to figure out a hat he wants. And then he puts on the, the typical uh, Buster Keaton flat hat that he used to wear. And he looks at the hat and goes, nah, and throws it away. <laughs> the audience just broke out in hysterics. <laughs> wow. So, you know, you, uh, to go see these silent films with an audience changes them completely. Changes the whole tone of them. Well, I, l I love silent movies. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and they're not silent, folks. You know. I mean, if you think about it, think about it for a second. It, how much of Indiana Jones has no dialogue? You know, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's no dialogue. All action. Uh, if you go and look at the shooting script for 2001 A Space Odyssey, the shooting script is only like 16 pages long. Wow. Because there's no dialogue, if you think about it. So how many films don't have dialogue? That's the question, and that's a lot of them, you know. So, you know, when you say, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, silent films, oh, how do they do comedy? It, 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 a lot of comedy they do in films is silent. You know, it's a, it's a visual gag or something like that, you know. But uh, it, it uh, you know, it's, it's good. I mean, you would have been a great silent film comedian. <laughs> no, because you've got that deadpan look about you. That look, yeah. I was just thinking, yeah, Keaton had that great face. Yes, yes. And you have a face made for silent movies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we need a time machine. And I have a, I have a uh, face made for radio. So, you know. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder why I let anybody see me, you know. Uh, I have just got, my, I've got bags under my eyes now. You know, you don't see me any longer. 
because we don't. I haven't seen you in a while, yeah. We don't do this as a visual because there's no way we can because you don't have the technology <laughs> to do it. You're going to shame me into getting this. Yeah. Okay, ask me another question. I got some time here. Hell with it. I'm so bad. I was trying to think. Oh, my God. Uh, that's the only names I can think of. Shit. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, who? Okay, I'll give you a quiz. Uh, the name Will, William Bobo. What? What's the significance of that name? William Bobo? Mm-hmm. William Bobo? I have no idea what you're talking about. That was the uh, name they put on the grave of Lee Harvey Oswald after the assassination. Oh. Because <laughs> they thought it would be destroyed. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> really Bobo, I think. Uh, really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. I don't know how they picked that. But. Do you know what grave they kept digging up? And they, uh, in fact, the body got stolen on several occasions. Lincoln. Oh, really? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. They went out to Springfield, Illinois, wherever he's buried, and they stole the body once and held it for ransom. And I think it was stolen a couple of more times till finally they they uh, encased it in like just steel, so nobody could go get it, you know. That's morbid. Well, it's it's ter- oh, you know whose body they stole? Oh yeah, Chaplin's. They did get Chaplin. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, they stole a Chaplin's body, and I think they were holding it for ransom. And I think they finally ca- <laughs> finally caught the guys. You know, <laughs> um, um, but uh, the reason they were able to steal the body is they were silent, and. Uh, <laughs> No, but uh, I remember that uh, Charlie Chaplin's body got stolen. I'm going, why does anybody want to steal Charlie Chaplin's body? But these guys go, and we'll hold it for ransom. That's kind of like the idiot who says, I got an idea. What? Let's steal the Eiffel Tower. Well, how are we going to get away with that? We're going to paint it a different color. (laughs) Have you ever heard a good Eiffel Tower joke? Uh, No. I have. Um... Yeah, uh, I. When are they going to finish the Eiffel Tower and put the sheetrock up? <laughs> <laughs> I always like that one. Uh, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> that is an ugly landmark. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, uh, it, 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 the thing is that I I remember these people because my father used to tell me about them. You know. I mean, uh, there are names I know of silent film stars you probably never heard of. Louise Fazenda. Do not know that one. I, it, I, can't, I can't even identify her. Couldn't show you a picture of her, but I do know the name Louise Fazenda. Um, and, I mean, there were a lot of silent film stars who were just absolutely terrific. Name, can you name a com- a comedians who made it from silent to sound? Uh, successfully, uh, successfully. Yeah, I, I would think W.C. Field. I don't, was he silent? I don't know if he was silent, to be honest with you. I think he was in vaudeville before he went into movies. Um, but I'll tell you who, who, who absolutely made the jump. Keaton didn't make the jump. Uh, Chaplin really didn't make the jump. Um... Lloyd never made the jump. He try, he made, did make a movie for Preston Sturgis called the, um, oh, what was it called? Oh, the uh, Diddlebach, Harold Diddlebach, uh, The Sins of Harold Diddlebach, uh, which was a very good film. But he never really made it to sound that well. But who made it to sound perfectly were Laurel and Hardy. Oh, that's right. You, you yeah. know, they were as well known as a silent team as they were as a sound team. And somehow their voices fit perfectly for the characters. And they uh, they were famous worldwide. Oh, absolutely. Um, in most cases, they changed their name from Laurel and Hardy to whatever the country's term was for fatty and skinny. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, they were, uh, they, they made the, the move to sound beautifully, beautifully. Um, 
Keaton had a great voice for the face, but it didn't play well, I don't think. You know. I did not know. He that. had a deadpan voice. Really? So it worked with the face. But it didn't translate that well. Although he made a lot of movies. You know, a lot of people think his career was through. He had an alcohol problem because he married some woman who treated him like shit. And he got to, he, his career just went bad and he started becoming an alcoholic. And when he finally straightened up, he started doing a lot of films. People don't remember, he played uh, the Indian character uh, in um, the Little Abner movies. Do you remember, the, did you see any of the Little Abner movies? I did not, no. And later on with kids, the, uh, later on, he, he became very popular with kids through the American International Beach Party movies, where he was always playing some kind of a character. So he he wow. had he had quite a he had a career going for him afterwards, you know. Did, uh, well, did just think him. about the, yeah the silent movies though that they actually could be totally international because uh, there's no language problem. Well, that that was the great thing about sound. They they worried about sound from the standpoint that they felt the film was an international language, and that once sound came in, it didn't. It became a you know this film is English and this film is foreign. And the only thing they had to do, the intertitles had to be changed, you know. Uh, but outside of that, you know, everything was good to go. Anyway, we kind of run out of time. I always love talking with you. I well, man, you, you, you could teach at college about uh, cinema. Yeah, but, but I know people, believe it or not, who know way more than I do. My friend Shecky, forget it, you know. He's just really? a tech. He, he he could write a textbook. Before I die, I got to meet Shecky. You got to meet Shecky. Everybody has to meet Shecky. Nobody in the comedy business can continue in the comedy business until he meets a guy named Shecky. <laughs> That's a comedy name. Anyway, hey, take care. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Next week, maybe. Ladies and Sounds gentlemen, good. that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Thanks to Larry Bubbles Brown. We really appreciate his, uh, his coming on the program and helping us do this little nonsense here, uh, which, uh, let's see, we only have two people waiting on right now. And I saw that Brian Neary is not going to be here tonight because he has a friend's birthday party. So that's two nights in a row without Brian Neary. And Bob Natale, I got a hold of him, and he said he's just he's writing a book right now, and uh, uh, he really doesn't have time to call the, the show. Uh, but he will, and, uh, you know, I think he's kind of lost a little bit of interest in it. So, you know, but so have I. <laughs> so we're not alone. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, man. I'm telling you. I just, I, uh, well, anyway. Let's go to what citizen panel we have here. Let's see here. Let's uh, get them all in here. Uh, and uh, they're, uh, they're coming into, into view. Uh, there's uh, Alan, and there's uh, um, uh, Charlie Wallace is coming along, and Trucker Steve is here, and Jeffrey Stein is here. And uh, oh, Josh Wheeler is calling. Uh, hello, Josh. Good to uh, good to have you on. Wait a minute. Let him just push his button, and there we go. There's Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah. You know, last night we were talking about people and how old they were on this panel, mm -hmm. and somebody mentioned that you're about the youngest person who calls this show. How old are you? Uh, 39. 39. You you probably are. You're certainly younger. Yeah, than I was anybody. also thinking about uh, Brian, the other Brian, the bus driver. Yeah. Uh, Lud Lud Ludwig? Ludwig. I think he may be the youngest, mm -hmm. but yeah. he never calls lately, so it doesn't doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, and Kathleen is joining us tonight. This is going to be a nice little panel. Uh, hello there, dear. How are you? How are you, Kathleen? Wait a minute. She's oh, she's connected to the audio. Hello, Kathleen. How are you? I'm good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy, 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 happy Friday. 
Uh, anyway. Oh, yeah, I forgot to brush my teeth before I did the show tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I just brushed mine. You ever brush too hard and then you make it hurt? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I usually put some oregano oil on it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I don't have that happen that much, but I, I was, uh, I guess, applying my my electric toothbrush a little too aggressively to this part of my mouth right here. Yeah. And so that's my problem. Anyway, um, good evening to all of you. A few things I want to bring up um, about the program uh, tonight, and that is that I've done something with the, uh, with the uh, uh, chat room here. Um, last night, I got a, yesterday, I got a, a letter from some guy can't remember his name now and uh he there was supposedly a a thread about alan on the on the thing okay on the chat and it was all nasty stuff Jesus. about about alan now you know i mean come on uh they always find somebody to pick on if if alan weren't here and phil was they'd be going after phil and I just don't like that. So I did two things. Uh, number one, I put the chat room on slow mode, which means you can only put in a thing every minute. Did you try that tonight, Charlie? And could you? Do, you only could do it every minute, right? What are you doing? Oh, I I didn't try. I got interrupted between the first and second post. Oh, okay. Well, if you had tried to do it immediately, you would have had to wait a minute. Uh, the other thing I did uh, is there's no way they can mention Alan because if they do, <laughs> it doesn't post it. <laughs> there, there goes go, my Alan. fan club. Yeah, yeah. There goes your fan club. I mean, you know, I might uh, I might do it, put it back to the way it was before, but uh, I don't like it when they go after people, you know? <laughs> what the hell? I mean, did someone crap on their cornflake, or what was their issue? Well, their issue was primarily that they don't like Alan, and it's just a, just a couple of them, you know. And they just get on there, and they just they're relentless in in what they're saying. Oh, I'm not going to listen to this show ever again as long as he's on it. You know? Oh, good grief! You know, cancel culture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Alan has every right to be here, as much right, by the way, as those people who are complaining about him have a right to call this program, but never do because they're cowards about it. Man. All right? So, I mean, unless you're going to call and be part of it, uh, you know, don't put down Knock people off. who have the guts to call this program and, and contribute to it. People hiding behind screens with their little scribblings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Maybe anyway, uh, John Redshaw says thumbs up to that. Well, you know, then none of those other people are here tonight. You know, so. Maybe uh, they're bots. No, they're not bots. No, no. I, I, I wish it were that easy. No, these are just people. They got into a little thread on how much they, uh, uh, I wonder if I can find it. Um, uh, it was in my... Uh, Let's see what here. What did I put it in, in my here. trash? Did I put it in the trash or did I put it in? Uh, uh, At least again. I know that Jeffrey and Kathleen will protect me. I'm mm -hmm. um, totally. Oh, here, here like we go. Here we go. Here, here. Want me to read you the thread? Okay. Here it goes. Tyson Zacosta said, "Alan, you need some time out. At least 24 hours." Our recheck says both Brian and Robert are absent uh, a lot. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Jeez. El, uh, Con, El Con writes, that's the most unfunny, disgusting joke I've heard in a long time. Where did Alex dig this Allen guy up? Uh, Scorpius 10 says, have Allen pittus. I don't know what that means. What is a pittus? Speak English. Yeah, uh, let's see here. A uh, uh, Scorpius again says, I'm looking for a new podcast. This sucks. Uh, you're not going to have a problem. There are something like three million of them out there. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it I mean, like gee, if I can find Trump a podcast, podcast, if I find a podcast, I'm going to go to it. And They'll probably complain about that podcast. El Khan then wrote, I won't be back anytime soon. 
Good. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. And Elton <laughs> wrote again, thanks, Alan. But as you can see, these are really just three people. Yeah. Yeah. Three people. Yeah. You know, and they and they and I just don't I don't like that. I you know I just don't put up with that. I and and secondly, uh, I will defend Alan's right to be here because I open up the doors to anybody who wants to call the program, and I don't turn them down. And these other people who just sit there in the background dissing people and dissing people and dissing <laughs> people, um, uh, and and don't call the show and contribute to it. They can, you know, they can go fuck themselves. If anybody of those people are listening right now, I'm gonna sick my bulldog John Larkin on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the bulldog. There we go. Thank people you. People have reasons that <clears throat> what? You know, I said some people have reasons that they maybe can't call or whatever, but. And, you know, which is fine and everything, you know, they work nights or weekends or whatever, you know, the deal mm -hmm. is, but <clears throat> it would be nice if they really disagreed with Alan or, you know, they thought he was way off base or they think he's stupid or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice if they called and they, you know, if they could and they spoke to him and the panel about it because those are your most lively, those are your best shows, right? Yeah. I mean... Phil and I have had, you know, discussions on here, and I'm not afraid to say things to him or whatever, but I've never said a personal thing about Phil, right? I mean, not right. even to you off the air, right? I mean, well, I, you know that. Well, I've never, it, ever said anything personal about Phil. But yeah, well, I mean, what they're doing is they're taking it to a different level, you know, Ooh. and they're taking it to uh, uh, lurking in the background and in their anonymity, and, and dissing one of the people on the show. If they did it about Jeff, I'd go after them too, or if they went after Charlie or Kathleen or any of you. Um, because I Nobody's just don't... Nobody's ever going to go after Charlie. What am I supposed to do? Ooh. Tell Alan not to call the program? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. No. But, but I mean, those those people would... I mean, I would, you know, it would be welcome to have people, you know, have a... Nice discussion, discussion. Oh, whatever. I mean, I love to listen. I would sit here and listen to it. You know, I have to talk. I mean, it would be great. Yeah, yeah. I, I would too. You know, but 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 they don't because they're cowards. But they're not out there tonight. They, I guess, they all decided to quit. Oh, they will be. They all decided well, to quit. Oh, so Terry Malone just got Test Allen on on it. Test <laughs> Allen. Oh, yeah, because he, he spelled my name differently. It it came up. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I, I think I spelled it A L A N. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the way it is here, but you can also spell it A L. Well, I I will go back on later and uh, put in the two names, the two versions of the names. Uh, somebody else will. Yeah, come on. Somebody try and write the word Allen. A L A N. Let's see. Let's see. Mm. Let's see if you can do it. Okay. Uh, come on, Terry Malone. Put in the word Alan. I mean, if the minute has passed by since your last post. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the chat is an easy place for people to do that. Yeah, so. well, I mean, I've, right. I've kind of been bothered by the chat, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's not the show. And it, it, it they get into their own discussions that have nothing to do with what we're talking about, you know? And yeah. and the only person who contributes to it decently is Charlie, who at the beginning of every night gets gives the death count, you know, which is and what what is the, the what is the death count right now? Well, it's um, dropping five hundred eighty-five thousand two hundred and I'm sorry, yeah, two hundred twenty-two. Do you think we'll make That's it? Do you think we'll make it to six hundred thousand? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah. Because it's slowing down, really. It is slowing down, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how many people have died from AIDS in all the years? AIDS? Yeah. HIV? I'm trying to remember. I used to know. Only, only around 700,000. Oh, really? 700,000? Wow. Yeah. Not worldwide. I mean, that's a lot, but... Oh, you mean, oh, you mean, world, you mean worldwide? Yeah. Oh, worldwide. Okay. How worldwide. many... How, how many in this country? Well, maybe it may, that might be just this country. No, I don't think I there were 700,000 dead from AIDS. You don't think so? No. For the whole world? Or just, 
I know the 700,000, it's either just this country or the whole world. Well, hold on a second. I will just ask Google, okay, how many hey, Americans, because we don't give a crap about the rest of the world. Well, I guess yeah. Terry Malone just told uh, you, huh? Of yeah. AIDS, uh, A-I-D-S. And uh, let's see here. He uh, might be right. HIV AIDS statistics, HIV epidemic. Uh, about 700,000 people have died of AIDS in the U.S. since the beginning of the HIV what? epidemic. That's what? That's what, 30 that, years? Or yeah, but that's 30 years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had we had almost 600,000 die in a year. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, still, that's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. and it could have been substantially more because a lot of people did not want to yes. kill anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And so the hospital or whatever, wherever they died, they might kind of just say that yeah. hard. Cancer instead of AIDS related cancer. Right. Yeah. The other yeah. thing that's interesting about it is is that we're talking maybe thirty years, granted. But how many of those years have we had the cocktails that have prevented people from dying? Ninety-six, it came in. I was just reading on it. I yeah, mid, yeah, mid nineties. In fact, mid I think that in the recent years, a couple of years, we haven't had anybody die of AIDS. Yeah, it's been a long time. Oh, yeah. 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 So well, look at Magic Johnson. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Get, uh, oh yeah. That was 90, 91? Yeah, but he never he's got. Still alive. He, he's still good. You know, he never got full blown AIDS. He went overseas, Alex. He was HIV he positive. What? He went overseas to get treatment by that famous Chinese doctor. It was the FDA didn't approve the drugs he had passed them. I forgot the guy's name. It was on Time That's, that's, that's the call. beginning of some kind of joke, like, what's his know. name? You know. Dr. I forgot his name. Dr. Ho. I remember, because I was following on stories. I'm a big basketball fan. I thought when he when that news Dr. broke, Dr. Schlong too long. Gone. What? When that news broke, I was upset because I was a big bird magic fan. I said, oh, God, magic's never going to let He's gone, I said. He had to retire. I, I don't well, even but get But he it. was only HIV positive. Being HIV was positive, was there was a difference between being did. HIV positive and having full-blown AIDS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, but full, I thought it was going to turn into it. I said, oh, God, he'll never last. I think nobody gets to, to uh, full-blown AIDS any longer, you know. And it's it, it has kind of lessened a great deal. Although there was a period of time where a lot of younger gay guys were going back to unprotected sex, and they started getting it. So you know. Yeah. So the, I think the reason that you you think that AIDS is gone, and the guy that's in the health that I think is from Ohio or whatever, he's not here tonight. Mm -hmm. He he said that that wasn't the case. You know, in the in the early in mid '80s when AIDS first came out. You were probably around here, Alex. Yeah, where is Scott? Scott, if you're out there, you might like to join this discussion yes. tonight. But but I think what a beautiful view, Kathleen. Um, I I think that uh, I, I think that uh, the gays learned early on, and then the straights took over getting it. A lot of people in Africa, straight people, it went rampant in Africa. And well, I think AIDS is still out there. I just don't think the yeah, numbers the, are the, there. The, there. You know, I had an argument once with the with the gay community in San Francisco really? over my feeling that the reason why it was so predominant among gays was because of the nature of transmission, that anal sex was really the culprit uh, because it was the only kind of sex in which there was enough um, exchange of blood product mm -hmm. because of, uh, you know, uh, sores, it's not sores, but uh, uh, fissures that you create in the anus doing that. And then that causes the sperm to connect with the blood. And so that's two blood products together. And that's what caused AIDS. The reason why you had more in foreign countries among heterosexuals was in some countries to do contraception to prevent having children. Yeah. They have great amounts of anal sex. whoop de do. Mm. Uh, and, and so because of that, they are, uh, they, they, they had a, a, a lot of incidents. I often said, when you find that you find a heterosexual who got AIDS, you got to ask them, uh, did you have, uh, anal sex? Was that part of it? 
Uh, I did ask, I'll tell you, the guy who was uh, Tony, um, who, Tony, right. Rock Hudson's boyfriend. Well, you had that interview, didn't you? Yeah, Rock Hudson's boyfriend uh, was on my show, and he talked about the whole thing and, you know, what happened and how he found out about it was he was watching television one day oh. at Rock's house while he was out of town, <laughs> and they said he was in Paris getting treated for AIDS, and he said, my whole life just kind of imploded at that moment. But he said, I, I said, look, I'm going to ask you a question here. I hope you don't mind me asking it. I said, but it's an important question. Uh, you've ne he didn't get it. He did not get it. And I said, my question is, did you receive or did you give? You know. And he said, we traded off. Mm -hmm. So my theory kind of went out the window on that one. You know, because he never yeah. came down with it, but Rock did. You know. You know, Jim Neighbors once said he always wanted a, you know, a part of the Rock, and now he's sorry. What? He said, I'm, I'm sorry. It's a joke. Doc, Rock no, Hudson no. joke. Yeah. Don't no. you remember Rock Hudson did the, the I don't know, a not mutual of Omaha, but some something, and they, you know, were as solid as a rock, and they showed a rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we ought to get some messages now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they love my jokes. It didn't even come out right. I don't yeah. know. I don't think I told the joke yesterday, and so that's kind of interesting. Where, where I saw the text yesterday, and he said there was a horrible joke. I'm like, no, you told that one. That hey, hey, by the way, just, just oh, you mean about the anal thermometer? Oh, okay. As a side, yeah. as, as a side track here, that I, uh, uh, Terry Malone writes. I wasn't part of the group that Alex just read, but I think, and then he writes Alan with an E, yeah. detracts from the show because he talks too much. <laughs> Lurking in the background is what the chat function is. Yeah? What Lurking in the was, background. What famous movie was Terry Malone, the main character? Oh, is this a... Is this a the waterfront? Trivia. Trivia. Oh, you know, I bet you're right. Uh, uh, I, bet, I bet. Is it Terry Malloy or Terry? Ma oh, you're yeah, right. That was Terry Malloy. Yeah. Terry oh, Malloy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On, on the yeah. waterfront. Well, That's the water a great movie. Terry Malloy. Yeah. Oh. Terry Malloy. Yeah. But that was very good of Tony to come close on that one. You yeah. know, I think was Terry Malloy. Yeah. Well, he was right. I was wrong. I was, yeah, he had the wrong name. Yeah. 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 I had that on VHS and DVD. I watch Boy, it like touchy. Years. Leave Jim Neighbors alone. I wonder if Terry Malone's parents had any kids that lived. Yeah, what well, leave leave um leave Jim Neighbors alone. Yeah. It's pretty hard not to right now. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. He passed away a few he years He passed ago. away a few years ago. Yeah. What a talented man. Now, you were playing into a rumor that ran around that right. he had had sex with Rock Hudson. That's right. And supposedly that was never true. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, think about Jim Neighbors. If you're Rock Hudson, do you really want Jim Neighbors? <laughs> Golly! You, you can have any gay guy you want in America, and you're going to pick Jim Neighbors? Right. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. okay. You know who was the lover of Marlon Brando, though? Who? You ready? Do you, any oh. of you remember Mr. Peepers, Wally Cox? Oh, yeah. yeah. He was... Brando's lover mm -hmm. for many years. Wow. Wait, 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 you're telling Brando me that Marlon kid. Brando was gay? Well, I think he went both ways. I think I'll never watch The Godfather again. Yeah, no, I think he went. I think he went both ways. I think uh, he was the kind of person that would just experiment in anything. You know, he was just. Well, a lot of people in Hollywood were that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Uh, but you know? uh, was he eccentric or was he just crazy? Was it? I always wonder, like when I watched yeah. all his interviews. So it was like, oh, it was he eccentric. Was he eccentric or was he just odd? Like Brando, was he in his own world? Take your choice. Like, Take your choice. I guess. I mean, what would you think, Alex? Do you think he's just that's just the way he was? Maybe. Who Brando? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way he was. Oh. Yeah. Well, didn't he refuse a uh, an Academy Award too or something? Well, I like yeah. 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 He, had the Indian he got uh, what did he win it for? It was <laughs> Little Tom. Oh, it was Godfather, I think. Yeah. 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 And he had Shasheen Little Feather. 
Yeah. How do I remember that name? Shashin Littlefeather uh, got up on stage and accepted for him and said he wasn't going to be there because he was, you know. Uh, In the cave swallowing a bug. Remember that on Heart of Darkness? Yeah, yeah. He But he actually did swallow a bug while he was doing the... The, the scene, and they left it in. I, I swallowed a bug. You know, who was one of the... <laughs> no, but, no, they didn't craziest. leave it in. That was part of the blooper reel. Yeah. 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 You know who was one of the craziest actors in real life was uh, Peter Sellers. He, he apparently, he, he was uh, not a good person. I mean, he, huh? you know, left the left families, and, and he was just, just a, a real mean, weird person. But a great actor. Really? He died young. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. She, um, he, uh, he, 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 left, he left his first wife and kid for uh, some starlet, you know, and then she dumped him and he went nutty. And apparently when they were making uh, that movie uh, Casino Royale, mm -hmm. he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't act at the same time in scenes with, uh, with, with, scenes with um, Orson Welles. Yeah, because he was just too weird. Uh, mm. Who was that? Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers. Wasn't Orson Welles dead when they made Casino Royale? No, no, <coughs> no. Orson, Orson Welles was in Casino Royale. Oh, I, um, okay. I'm thinking of the James the Bond. Movie? Yes, Craig. the original Casino Royale, not oh, the okay. remake. Yeah. yeah, with Woody Allen. <laughs> with Woody Allen. Oh, boy, that must have been funny. Yeah, it was. It was sort of like a satire. And there were like about seven different James Bonds in the picture. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty stupid movie, but. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Woody Allen was in it, and uh, uh, David Niven played yeah. one of the James Bonds. Sounds like the Pink Panther version. Woody Allen played Little James Bond. Yeah. Uh, and then they had uh, uh, Orson Welles played Le Chiffre. Yeah, yeah. The bad Wasn't guy. Was Peter O'Toole in that movie too? Peter O'Toole, I think. Well, everybody was in that movie. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was one of those. It, it was the follow-up, believe it or not, to what film? The Pink Panther. No, no. What's up, Tiger Lily? No, no. no. It was a follow-up to a Woody Allen-written film hmm. called "What's New, Pussycat." Hmm. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, he decided he got the rights to that particular film, Casino Royale, because here's what happened. Uh, the company, United Artists, and Broccoli and Saltzman and those people who own the rights to the James Bond pictures, did not have the rights to Casino Royale because it had originally been done on CBS as an episode of a show called Climax. And so CBS owned the rights to Casino Royale. So they well, they wanted to make the movie, but they couldn't make the movie because of the rights belong to somebody else. And this other guy jumped in and said to CBS, "Hey, how much to buy the rights for Casino Royale?" And then they handed they handed the whole deal. Woody Allen, I think, was on the writing team of that mm -hmm. picture, and they made that they made a rather non James Bond picture out of it, yes. you know. So, but uh, anyway, um, uh, so, uh, um, how you how you doing there, Josh? What's new? Oh, I can't hear you. Your mic isn't on. Did you get a shot yet? Um, there you I go. I don't think there's much new. Uh, I think everything's about the same, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Uh, what do you think about all the little happenings in Washington? Nothing too terribly dramatic. Just oh, no. No, I think it's about what we expected. I mean, Other than the I think fact that uh, the Republican Party is fucking blasting apart well i mean parties. i don't know that they're blasting apart i think they have a cohesiveness that's taking them in the wrong direction yeah i would say that's more so sure. right i mean i i think most all of them are in agreement that they're going to follow trump wherever it leads and then like well, you well, said well, there like, are a few that don't want to take that path and they're just taking whatever steps they have to take to neutralize those people. Well, explain to me, though, why are people so dedicated to, to, to Trump? I mean, to begin with, uh, is, is it my imagination, or didn't he lose an election there? Well, he lost an election that was stolen from him illegally by crooked Democrats, but other than that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I... 
I mean, but what you are say, they doing? Explain what to me why. And I mean, I, I honestly, I honestly can't offer an answer because I, I. What do they think is understand. the advantage of following Trump? I mean, they could certainly I have their. I don't know. I, mean, I honestly don't know. I mean, I really don't get it. And I think that as time passes another year and a half or two years and we get further and further away from him, I think, you know, it, more average independent voters and everything, you know, obviously Democrats will move on further and further from him. And, and I, I think the Republican Party will still make some gains and everything. But I just don't know that that fever for him that got him elected the first time around is going to come back to that mm -hmm. same level. You know, and I don't see it. So well, there I, wasn't even there wasn't even a, I, I a, there it. wasn't even a fever there because from a from a, well, a, a right. certain standpoint, he lost that election too. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, he just right, won yeah. by the electoral college, but he didn't want he he lost by three million votes. Yes, he's not yeah. a he's not an overly popular person. Period. He is just very popular with the people that he's popular with. I mean, they just have. Who are those? The level of enthusiasm and dedication that makes his overall acceptance seem ho much higher than what it is. I, I mean, mean, who are they, these people? Are they retards? Uh, oh, that's that's right. Kids. They have yeah, issues. So. Yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah. yeah, what I don't understand is how they're coalescing behind this guy based on a lie. I mean, they, they, they're saying that, <laughs> the, that the election was stolen but he lost states like Arizona and Georgia that are completely controlled by Republicans. How did the Democrats steal those states? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. They were supposed yeah. to be a slam dunk. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and what they're doing now in, in Arizona, it's getting to be hilarious. They're yeah. counting the votes in this auditorium, the stadium or whatever, no. this, this arena. And they have to, they had to get out of there for the weekend because there's some kind of like graduations or stuff going on in the arena and uh, these ballots are all over the place and they're trying to prove they've got bamboo in them because they were made in Asia and then they what were the shipped hell? in to the oh. United States. Isn't Phil yeah. shooting in Nevada? Imagine he starts shooting the ballots, Phil, that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is, it, there's, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what. You still think it's rigged. You know, it doesn't matter what they do or how many times they do it. He's not going to change his tune of crying foul, right? I mean, they could literally invite him to come in and count the votes himself, you know, alone. And, and he it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't matter. It's not going to satisfy him because, because there's no advantage to, to admitting the truth, right? You know, the advantage is in continuing to toe the line of, yeah. you know, it was stolen, it Keep was stolen, you know, to push that propaganda. So, I mean, they're going to keep doing that. You know, I think Biden is doing the right thing. He's just carrying on. He's ignoring it. You know, he, he doesn't mm -hmm. talk about Trump. He doesn't bring Trump up. He's trying to work with Republicans where they can. You know, he makes good faith efforts to to make things work. And then when they don't want to cooperate or when they walk out of the White House and, you know, basically stab him in the back five minutes later, he just turns away and says, OK, I did what I had to do. I had him over. I talked to him. I did everything I could. If they're not going to work, we're just going to go on. And, you know, three and a half years from now, if I get reelected, fine. If I don't get reelected, fine. Yeah, that's just how it is. That's. Life in American politics. John, what, what, would, what would all these people, what would all these people do if Trump had got reelected? In four years, what would they do? That, that he's he would be gone then, unless he changed the constitution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, a lot more people would have died. Yeah, it yeah been, a lot well, more people would have oh, died. Oh yeah, we obviously know that. But I, I'm just saying, none of us would probably have our vaccines by now. Yeah, we mm -hmm. uh, we dodged a bullet on that one. Had he been reelected, he would not have done what it took to get all these uh, these uh, definitely you know not. The shots I, out. I don't only knows what would have happened. Yeah, it would have been crazy. My, my point was some of them who are on this show wouldn't be here today. Yeah, right. Yeah, 
I, no, my, my point was, was if he had got reelected, forget about all the, the bad things he could have done. If he got reelected in four more years, he wouldn't be electable. And then with, with all these Republican well, people there uh, saying he stole the election, what would they do then? Yeah, uh, where was it? Uh, um, let's see here. It says, uh, Somebody wrote here. I guess I missed it here. Had no cue cards. I, I, well, I, I, I th thought I saw something here that. Um, oh, are Republicans hmm. being afraid of being primaried? Yeah, afraid of being primaried. That's it. Yeah. That somebody said here, I think John Redshaw, that they were afraid of being primaried. And I got news for you. I think that's a fear they shouldn't have. You know? I mean, I, I, my, my feeling is, what, what's her name's up for re-election? Isn't she um, Liz Cheney? Liz yeah. Cheney. Mm -hmm. I, she's going to be primary. I think she's going to do fine. I think she's going to win. I think her people, you know, they, they knew she was a staunch conservative. They admired that about her. Uh, you know, no matter what you want to say about Liz Cheney, you have to admire her for her consistency. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, she's going to she's going to win just based on that. But that's my. Well, well, you know, she's in Wyoming, so it doesn't take a whole lot of people in Wyoming to vote her out. You know. Yeah. yeah. Have a lot of people there. But, but she, I, I heard a lot I, of Trumpsters in Wyoming. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, you I, know I, what I don't understand. Why do you? Why are you so fearful of not being reelected to Congress? It doesn't pay a lot of money. It's a shit job. You might have to sleep in your office because you can't afford to have an apartment. I mean, Jeez. why do you want to do that? You know, run for because Senate. They make a fortune while they're in Congress. They make what? Yeah. They make a fortune while they're in Congress. They do all this insider trading. They know what yep. laws are going to be passed, so they know mm -hmm. what companies to invest in, and they yep. clean up. Yep. By the way, Matt. Lining the pockets. <laughs> Looks like Matt Gates has been ha is going to be had. <laughs> oh, he Poor needs to guy. be had. I feel sorry for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. You feel sorry for who? Matt Gates. You feel sorry for Matt Gates? Yeah. Not me. Oh, no, I see. Okay. <laughs> There's everything he got, gets. Hey, did you uh, did you hear this week? Um, I, I I heard somewhere in the media that um, the Palm Beach uh, authorities have been making plans on what to do if a certain uh, uh, guy with green hair gets indicted and how they're going to deal with, you know. Oh, no, you know, you're, no right. you're talking about the Trump. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. they, it's the, is it Palm Beach? It's wherever Mar-a-Lago Mar is. Yeah, Palm uh, Beach. They have a whole uh, idea of what they're going to do in order to accommodate any extradition that might yeah. be asked for because they're going to go along with it. They're not going to fight it. Well, the governor might might try to block it there. Oh, he'll definitely try and yeah. block it. I, can he block that kind of extra? I guess he could. Well, making not a really. claim that he can try, but it's never been done before. Yeah. What, Jeff? Uh, he's making a claim that the, the rules in Florida <clears throat> is that he doesn't have to leave from from Florida. If the governor wants him to stay here, oh okay. boy! But but he doesn't like being in, in uh, Florida in the summer. It's too hot, so he'll go up to. <laughs> the, yeah, the, well, he, he, he I, I think he's through with New York now. I think oh, yeah, he's completely he's through with yeah. New York. Yeah, right I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he sells Trump Tower soon. I mean, yeah, I don't want to say this, Alex, but I I wonder if he feels even safe here. I mean, can he even walk around anymore? He probably can't. They probably boom when if he walks down the street. I, I, I wonder if he, even, what? he doesn't, doesn't even own Trump Tower, Tower to sell it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's like can I can sell somebody? my neighbor's car, you know. <laughs> don't don't the uh, people in Congress and. <laughs> The uh, senators make the same amount of money, like two hundred thousand. Well, he's, up, he, he's Isn't he up to his ass in debt anyway? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sure yeah. he is. Yeah, bazillions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's, we it's, all feel sorry for him, right? Uh, Wrong. Yeah. Well, 
you know, uh, I just uh, I I don't care if he gets arrested and thrown in jail. I'm I I'm just I glad I'm just glad he's out. I would like to see something happen that would make it impossible for him to try to run for president again. You know, uh, and well, and if you're in prison, you can't. Well, yeah, but first you you've got no, but but somebody's right. First, you got to get him out of Florida. That's well, that's yeah. that's the first. Yeah, Problem. but I have a feeling this Florida thing can be overdone by by the, a judge. So or the FBI, federal law enforcement can go right into Florida and grab whoever they want. Yeah, really? there you go. If uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, but <clears throat> if if he's not as protected as he wants me to think. Well, I mean, if, if the governor of Florida doesn't allow the extradition to take place, I think he can fight it, you know. Doesn't mean he's going to be successful at it, but he can fight it, you know, c claiming states' rights. That would be fun, though, wouldn't it? And, it and the, the, what they've got against Trump, I don't believe, is a federal uh, deal. It's a state deal. It's New York. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... You know, it, there might be something in there though that's federal. They, they might know. be going for tax evasion. Yeah, I think that's what you know. Well, yeah, that would be that. That's federal crime. Yeah. Then I think they could extradite him, or couldn't yeah. they just try him in Florida? Yeah, they have they have courts there. It doesn't matter yeah. where they where they do it. Um, so anyway, so how you doing, Tony? How's life going without mom? Yeah, I missed her a little today. My brother and his girlfriend took me off a chink, so it felt better. We ate oh, in a favorite Jesus. place. Jesus. What did, what did you just say? <laughs> Chinese. Okay. I, mean, I, was, I was a little down. Then my brother was like, come on, we'll take you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. good. I had chicken with broccoli. And Do you like that better than kikes? <laughs> <laughs> I love my Chinese food. Oh, Tony, that reminds me of a David Mamet play. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What? Where, where they they always say, hey, you go, let's go to the kike, or let's go to the the chinks. We're really? at the chinks, you know, yeah, David yeah, Mamet, yeah. American Buffalo, or whatever. Yeah, it's it's strange in the house because it's a little like I'm upstairs. It's quiet without her. It's like you know she's not screaming. Well, so of I'm course kind of it's quiet me. without her because your mother isn't there going, Tony, Tony, I, I need you, Tony. The other day I was watching TV up here and I thought I heard something. I was like, oh, what is that? And it was the, it was like the wind or something blowing. I said, you know, and I, said, I wasn't scared. And I said, don't tell me she's sending a signal. I said, How do you feel about not making the money you were making, though? You had uh, insurance coverage. He probably I mean, does better on unemployment. I'm actually doing really well selling my book, so I can't complain about money. Mm -hmm. So that's really... This, so guy, this any... guy is, you know, he, he I always looked upon... Tony, I, saw the, uh, I always looked today, upon, if you, I don't mean this in any horrible way, Tony, but I no, always looked right. upon you as a basic moron. It's okay. And, I can't and, 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 uh, I used to laugh at that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, one day, I realized you were smarter than the rest of us with your goddamn comic books. Alex, I sold one customer today, almost 700 bucks. I got to ship it out tomorrow. 700 bucks? Yeah, he, saw, he bought four items from me. And none of none of them oh, vi no. none of them vibrated or anything like that. Nothing, huh? It's all in plastic. It, it, it didn't even cost me like maybe it cost me maybe 50, sixty bucks for the whole thing for myself. Wow! But nice. I had to put out maybe seventy bucks. Very nice. And and you made how much? Seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars. Yeah. In tax and everything. What's the biggest? What's the biggest amount of money you made off of spending the least amount of money to buy the product? Uh, I'm sure there's some like twenty five cent comic books that yeah, you had I would sitting say, around. All right. I would say my X Men '94. I had two copies. I bought one that I graded. It was like a seven O. I graded it. It probably cost me sixty five dollars. I think I got about nine hundred for it, maybe a thousand years ago. Really? Yeah. I have another one in a nine two that cost me seventy five, but I bought it twenty years ago, and it's probably worth about six grand. What? Yeah, I have. I have the first appearance of the X Men Giant Size One and Hulk One Eighty One. Giant size one, I know where I bought it from because I used to mark everything. Mm -hmm. I paid, and Shecky has the same comic too. I have it, I bought, I bought it for $75 on Austin Street in Forest Hills. And I know the owner, the old guy. I, I, was, I was on a want list and I was doing work for him. He says, I got the book if you want. And I says, you know what? I says, Mike, I want it. I'll be up there. So I jumped on the train. I bought this about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I CGC'd it so I encapsulated it. 
So it's tamper proof and they graded and everything. We're, you know, do a restoration. Grading, in case people don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. So people like who actually officially grade yeah. how so good yes. the comic book is, you yep. know. If it's in, it's in a hot place. Yeah. yeah. And then show them, show them the stamp that, that tells the grade. Yeah. Well, this Where? is a Hulk from 1979, so it's got a 98. So this would be like a near mint. This is like 98 is. Free, right? it, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I could get better than that than the 99. So actually, my X Men is a. How much, is, how much is what you're holding in your hand? This works. one here, this cost me nothing because this is my personal collection that I never read. I would say I could easily, I know I could sell it to one guy in California for an easy 160 bucks. We're not even putting it up. He'd buy it right now. Because oh, yeah. all he does is buy Hulk. Well, that's not that's not like the first appearance of the Hulk. Right? No, no. This is just like a book from 1979. What's the most expensive? My most expensive book yeah. is that yeah. giant size X-Men 1, Hulk 181. The giant size one is worth probably at least 13 grand. I paid seventy five dollars for it, Alex. Seventy five. I kid you not. Yeah, and yeah. the one eighty one of the Hulk has got to be worth. It. I paid nothing for that. I bought that in like in the mid eighties, where I, I had I had a hard time finding that book. That's got to be worth at least ten to fifteen grand easy. Wow. How do you wow. price them? Well, I price it by this. You you can on CGC they have a site, so you, they keep a rolling average like certain yeah. states, so you know what they're going for. So if you were going to sell something, Kathleen, I could tell you what you can get for that. By I can look nice. It up. Yeah, you have to. You don't realize how many. See, years ago, before CGC, these people didn't realize it. There was always multiple. When you're looking for certain books in certain years, and the cover is black, like I can tell you, certain Batman's I was always looking for, like say in the mid '70s. The rarity of a book, people don't realize the rarity of a book of the condition. If a cover is all black, like a lot of it breaks color. You don't even have to look at it. The paper is yep. thin, and you cannot find stuff like that in high grade. And it was always like a hidden multiple. See, I saw people at shows. They used to hate me at shows because I used to have guys. They used to come up to me and say, "I guess if I'm not trying to break, they'd be like, can you do me a favor before I buy this book?'" I says, "What? Well, that tells me you can grade books." Says, "Yeah, I kind of could." He goes, "Can you look at this for me?" So I used to look, and the dealers used to get mad. I says, "I can't do it anymore." He says, "Why?" Because I got to buy from this guy. Yeah. And if they're saying it's an 8.5, and I would tell the guy, you know, meet me over there, what do you think it is? I says, I, well, it's not an 8.5, I said. What would you give him? And I didn't want to do that because I'm not getting paid for it, and I don't want to screw so it up. So I take it all back. Tony's not a moron, okay? And actually, if we're looking at comp, but Alex, I did this all the time. I was always, like, neurotic with it. Like, how shaky you know, is my movies? I was never, I'm like this I, with my comic I books. I was never into comic books. The only thing is, is that I started collecting a few years back. You told me that. Uh, 3D comic books. They probably worth. They definitely worth money, Alex. Oh, I'm sure. Money. I mean, I've got uh, you know uh, the Mickey Mouse, yeah, the Mighty Mouse, rather right? the Mighty Mouse, which was the, which was actually the first 3D comic that they put out. You know, I've got a lot of them, uh, and um, you know, so I I don't know how much they're worth though. They're sitting in a in a, a vault somewhere up in Petaluma, California. Yes, uh, uh, Alan. Yeah. Two things, two things. One is my fan club has now turned to go after uh, Tony. Oh, okay. Tony yeah. is crazy Great. because of comic books. Yeah. Or did comic books make him crazy? All right. And the second thing is, hey, Tony, yes. you're this good. Why don't you stop collecting comic books and open up a grading service like wow. the professional coin grading service? Yeah. They make a fortune just well i'm eight. i'm actually a cgc dealer so i really have no desire to you know how much money oh. it is to open up a thing and okay. you know what you can't compete with these guys, you know what we so. should do i should oh. like do a thing with you where you call me and then we'll do a thing and do a show just you and i uh, -huh. uh on comics oh i would on, love on pod, uh, podcasts on comics and i bet i bet we get more viewers than we get for this dipshit piece of crap here. i mean alex you had to see when i was a kid i used to always my mother used to and, well, see, let's, I, let's I, think I about it tony like, maybe we'll do one and i'll call yeah. you and we'll do it and i'll put it up and we'll see how many yeah, people are interested want. in it i think that that would be a, a big that'd big be hit, awesome you know and you can talk about comics and about grading them and how you grade them and you know. And you know what I didn't realize too that my brother actually told me because he's older than me. It's like I didn't realize it. Like I, it was a nice way that my mom really. I never really understood that they didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And my brother's like, when she used to work, if I wanted something, mm -hmm. even if like say it was a couple of books, yeah. she would actually buy it for me to encourage me to do it. You know, before she died, she mm -hmm. told me 
Sell your book. She didn't want me to do anything. You know, stupid. you know what's funny? Since you and I started talking, we got ten more list viewers oh, yeah. as a they result. Want me to grab of, you, books. you know, we should talk about it. I, I'd like yeah, to yeah, try it. Once. I'm, I just, I'm just That's curious it. to see if I put it up and I give it all the right tags and everything. You can ask me whatever you want. Don't you know? That's you fun. know what? What again? You know. Uh, uh, well, Tony's I'll, I'll, Comic okay. Corner. And I have to say, you know who taught me how to grade <laughs> Kathleen and Alex? The right. old, this old nice Jewish guy and his wife. They, my mom used to go shopping in Brooklyn, so we used to jump on the bus, be down there in like 15 minutes. He, she used to go around the stores. He used to sit me in the store and he used to bring the books up. Why does he have to be there. a nice Jewish guy? Can't he be a complete asshole? Well, he was really <laughs> nice to Alex. Yeah. He, I had to see him in the wife. I used to sit there with the kid, and he sat there. Yeah. That's how I learned. He used to sit there. Look for this. Look for. He was an old guy. He said, "Look for." My mom used to do the shopping because she knew the owner and the wife, mm -hmm. and he used to come. And then he used to give me comics to take home. So he actually showed me what to look for. Okay, I have to say okay. it was well, ingenious. The calm, guy was really down now. The segment's over with. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. By the way, <laughs> oh, he's leaving now. Try, oh, that whole wallpaper. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so hideous, that wallpaper. I mean, his mother's dead. He could, like, redo the wallpaper. Have him turn the desk and camera that he's sitting at somewhere else. Look at this stuff, folks. Here, I'll put my arrow. Look at that. Look at the fringe along the bottom there. Look at that. Oh, he's got Look at that. The diamond, the and then what is what is this thing up here? What is that? You know? And it's uh, it's really, it's amazing. It's amazing. Anyway, um, uh, t uh, let's remember, tomorrow is Trucker Steve's birthday. Well, happy birthday. Mm -hmm. You're oh, going to be how old so. again? 30? 46. 46. Wow. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and how old is the dog? Uh, he's three. He's three. He's, he's, a, he's a little puppy. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, he's going to be him soon. Uh, Kathleen, do you have any pets now? You yeah, have a cat. You have a cat, right? Three or four. Three cats. How do they mm -hmm. like the new house? They love it. I mean, there's 6,000 square feet to roam. Mm. Wow. Wow. So they never have to see each other, basically. No. Nope. What happens when you want to find them, though? Can you find well, them? Well, I have one that sticks in my room, Bitty. Uh -huh. Yeah. That one right there. Yeah. She, she, for the most part, she stays in my room. Sometimes at night, she'll go up and down the hallway. Mm -hmm. But my other two cats, they're pretty much downstairs. Really? So I can always find them. Oh, good. Because they're always trying to find me. They're like, okay, where the hell is she? They, they're cool cats. They're looking for food. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, she really, uh, you know, and then so you have cats. So you never had any dogs? Nope. My parents did, but by mm -hmm. that time, I had already moved out of the house. Yeah. So you you don't like? I like do I like all you like animals. dogs. Okay. Oh yeah. I just I've never been that fond of dogs. You know, um, it's kind they're, of. They're funny. a lot of work. I mean, I don't cats. mind dogs. Cats, but, cats own you. Humans yes. own dogs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I like the fact that a cat. Uh, you, you really, if a cat likes you, you got to earn their respect. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 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 the thing I like about cats is the attitude of yeah. they rub against you and everything. Feed me, feed me. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Okay, here. Okay, I just That's ate. Like my mother. I just ate. <laughs> Fuck you. Joking, right? Yeah. right. That's the cat attitude. I just, I just, I just ate my tail. Fuck you. You know. Um, and that's what I like about cats. Dogs, dogs are simple. Yeah, but they dog, smell dogs your are... ass, and if it smells right, they like you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You are my master. Oh, you can beat me, and I don't care. You know, I mean, uh, dogs are are very. Uh, it, it, so who was it? Uh, Chuck Jones, who was the animator of a lot of the Warner Brothers cartoons, mm -hmm. the good ones like the Coyote and the Road Runner, yep. and so on. Uh, he once said that he always liked doing dogs because dogs were the best salesmen alive. <laughs> and really, all the dogs in his cartoons were exactly that. He, had, you know, they were all kind of salesmen. He had one that was just, you know, would always uh, try and uh, 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 get Porky Pig to uh, do whatever he wanted. You know, so I mean, uh, it was, it, you know, I uh, dogs are salespeople. Dogs are always acquiescent, but cats, man, you know, they 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 they're loving and they care, but 
You know, fuck you after you fed me. I don't care. Till the next meal, I don't need you. Yeah, Tony, can you read the side text that's going on? They're talking about you. No, I don't even t- look at it. Forbert Delasa says, Terry Malone, I love Tony. That's why I ask him to discover a mirror <laughs> and shampoo and... C- that's why I ask him to discover a mirror and shampoo and comb. Oh, because my hair is all messy? Yeah. Who gives a shit? Exactly. Fuck yeah. you for it. Yeah. Yeah. These people have... I replied to that. Me. It's 10 to 12. So where am I going? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, oh, I'll get this one. Tony is crazy like a fox and a great panelist, unlike a certain moron panelist <laughs> who is not to be mentioned. Well, at least they're not... Uh, no, it can't be mentioned because you can't put his name on there. Try. Everybody's, nobody's been getting it on. They've been getting uh, A-L-L-E-N on, but they haven't been getting A-L-A-N on. You might also put A-L-L-A-N. It's spelled that, three different that's ways. That's my middle name. Yeah. I take it as a compliment. That's your middle name, Alan? Yeah, yeah. and it's with, with the A's. And the... Oh, no wonder you're so protective. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, hey, uh, so, uh, how's your wife doing, Josh? Your wife was not f- well. She had to have an operation. Is she okay now? I mean, yeah, she's a, she's okay. She's just, uh, re- you know, like recovering. She has her therapy. And she has it, is it a long her. recovery? It was a thing on the leg, was it? No, it was on her arm. My arm. arm was broke pretty bad, and her elbow had to like, be reconstructed. Wow. How, and how did she do it again? He fell she off fell a ladder, down. right? Off a ladder. No, she didn't fall off a ladder. She just tripped and fell over something while she was walking where she works and she was carrying something. Oh, okay. Marjorie has broken so many bones in her body. I mean, she had a leg thing and she had this thing and that thing. And I mean, she just, A, she's clumsy. That's for starters. And B, she just has brittle bones for some reason. Oh, Didn't you just go on vacation? Remember, and you had her on video. She got hurt. Yeah, she, she, uh, um, what, what, what was it? Did she, she was cursing you, Alex. Remember that time when you had her on the video? Well, no, she had this. She's always had this back problem, and it was getting worse and worse. Mm-hmm. And when we got to Europe finally, that, yeah. she had. She we wound up. What she wound up having to use a cane, a oh, crutch no. rather, and I mean it was horrible. I mean all of a sudden the back went bad on her. And she was using the sticks and the whole deal. And we got back to the United States and they had to operate on her. But I, the best part was that she was so bad that when we finally got to the final airport before coming back to the United States, um, we, um, oh, it, it was two planes actually. Uh, we, I said she has a problem walking and they didn't want to hurt her at all. So they got her a wheelchair and they wheeled her to the plane and on one of the planes, they actually took her up in this lift that oh, went up and placed her in the plane. <laughs> they didn't want no lawsuits. They didn't want any lawsuits, yeah, right? right? You know. Yeah. Plus, we got through customs really easy. We could have bring. Nice we could have bring. Jackie bring, does the quick check. You we, got right through. Alex, we could have been been been. Uh, we could have had twenty pounds of coke, and we would have been zipped <laughs> so right not, through. Not it through. Don't worry about it. So, but I do know, you know, the problem that those the uh, the. The the you know the recovery takes longer than anything else you know, but I'm sure after the, is she is she in pain at all anymore? Has she gotten it pretty well taken care of? Well, I mean it still lingers and everything, and she has some physical therapy now that she has to start, and yeah, um, they still haven't really even tried well, to I- move her her <laughs> to extend her arm or anything. It's basically. Uh, won't even do that for another couple well, of weeks. What so, I hate yeah, about it, it was pretty bad. What I hate yeah. about physical therapy is they, oh, they they do the physical therapy with you, and then they say, "Now do this when you get home." Yeah, and I don't want homework for my physical therapy. You, you need it. I hated homework in high school. Important. I don't want homework and yeah. physical yeah. therapy. Yeah. You know, but I still got oh, my yeah. black and blue mark. Look at that. Look at that thing. From yeah. the from the shot, but my finger does. I do the arthritis doesn't doesn't bother me anymore. It's mm. Pretty well gone. Better away. living through cortisone. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, I, I I I don't like getting the cortisone because it's very mm. painful and it leaves me with a black and blue mark. Look at that. Mm-hmm. What I wow. should have done, I was told that you can prevent black and blue marks like that by when you get like a an injection or a shot or whatever, like maybe you're getting your vaccination. 
hold your finger on mm -hmm. the site for about two minutes after the shot, and it won't it will you it won't go black and blue on you. Do you take blood thinners, Alex? No. Mm -hmm. No. You gotta be careful when you cut yourself. Uh, excuse me, it's Doctor. Uh, do you have that oh, yeah. on your na name tonight, Doctor Allen? Yeah, it's Doctor Allen. Allen. I noticed that last night. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a pleasure. Anytime we can have a member of the medical community on our program. Absolutely. Another Jewish doctor. That's all you need. Even a even a phony one. But anyway, um, let's see here. Anything else? Just play a doctor on the Alex Bennett show. I never had any problem with Phil. Great guy. Oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, <there's laughs> <me missing now. laughs> all of a sudden, you guys like Phil. Okay, well. What is he, is he shoot weekend, Alex? I remember yeah. I heard your interview with him. And, you know, if you weren't here, Alan, they'd be going after, I don't know, John. You know, they'd be going after Kathleen. Get that whore off the show. <laughs> You know. Fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd have to we'd have to use Kathleen's software to go find them and kick their ass personally. Yes. Yes. Ding dong. Well, hello. Yeah, really. <laughs> Remember me? I uh I, would you like to meet my friend Alan? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> With an A. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's been able to write the word Alan here. Oh, it's really that's really hilarious. It does work. It, it does, does work. work. That's funny. I'll have to put in with the Ian as well, so they can't do it uh, at all. And A L L A N. Please suggest Marjorie try Linger Yoga. What is Linger Yoga? Oh, that's nice. Lyanger Yoga. It emphasizes posture and back pain relief, not the hot yoga nonsense. Way better than physical therapy. Cortisone hides pain. Oh, we got another doctor in. Chat. I don't care. <laughs> There's another doctor on the. I house. don't care if it hides pain. It feels fine. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? Yeah, it does make the arthritis go away. But everybody, I was told right here is the most common place for people to get arthritis. You know, so what the hell? Mm -hmm. Who sent me a message? Oh, that's my achievement for today. Today I walked another. One and a half miles. So. Nice. That's but amazing. the last last part of it, I was just loping along. I was just in bad shape. I don't know. I'm falling apart. Loping. I'm falling apart. Loping. You know. Loping. Yeah, well, anyway. Hey, listen. <laughs> it's the end of the show for tonight. Hopefully next week, uh, Brian Neary will be back with us. And, and uh, you know, I, and I always, I'm always happy when Josh is here. Uh, I just wish we had Kevin call. Then it could be, you know, a, a, a threesome to get together on Saturday nights. Huh. But anyway, because um, Josh and I and Patrick and Kevin kind of have our own little little chit chat. It doesn't go out over the air or anything like that, you know. But it's great conversation, isn't it, Josh? Very good. Yeah, it's very good. Anyway, very, very good. hey, listen, that's the theme song playing. Thank you so much, Alan, with an A. <laughs> you can't spell that on here. Uh, thank you uh, to Trucker Steve and to Charlie Wallace and to Josh Wheeler and to the lovely and attractive Kathleen Halstead Schmoody. And, uh, of course, uh, Jeff and jo uh, uh, John Larkin. And, of course, uh, the smartest guy here and probably could buy and sell all of us and grade us as well. Uh, Tony, uh, for being here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back, too. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Appreciate your participation. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. Uh, that's our citizen panel for this evening and for this week. We'll be back again on Monday at 4 o'clock when we do the, uh, the little Monday pop-up show. I just do it because it's just great people to be with, and it's a nice conversation. And then we'll be back again uh, next uh, next Tuesday. In the meantime, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. You can call him on Skype at GabNet Live. And I will see you on Tuesday, 10.30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, if you need to, wear a mask, especially if you're not vaccinated. And if you aren't vaccinated, get vaccinated. But whatever you do, stay safe out there. 
Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend.